Another very important protocol is Bluetooth. This Bluetooth technology is heavily used for building IoT connectivity. We have already gone through Zigbee, we have also gone through different other allied technologies such as 6 low pan, such as heart, wireless heart, RFID and also NFC. And this particular technology Bluetooth is typically used for bit of different kind of applications, applications where it is required to form a personal area network, maybe to replace the wireless wired connectivity between the different devices. Wired connectivity if you want to, to, to replace the cables between different devices, Bluetooth can be used. So, you remove the cables, have wireless connectivity between them that can be done with the help of Bluetooth and this is this protocol that we are going to discuss in this particular lecture. So, if we look at the Bluetooth technology, this is particularly used for short range communication, personal area network. For instance, connecting different peripherals to a computer. Peripherals to a computer using Bluetooth is a very commonly used application of Bluetooth. The second could be to transfer data using Bluetooth between two mobile devices. These mobile devices of course, need to have the Bluetooth radio to be supported, but if it is supported and nowadays most of the mobile phones, particularly the smartphones, they are all enabled with Bluetooth. So, you know one can transfer files, music, videos, so on and so forth and this is something very common that we do, commonly we transfer files, we transfer different things between two Bluetooth devices, a very simple form of Bluetooth configuration where we have two Bluetooth devices, a client and a server and the data is transferred between these two devices, a very simple kind of configuration. Now, in this particular course, in this particular lecture, we are going to go through all these different applications. So, it is used, Bluetooth is used for short range communication and it is typically used for instances where it is required to replace the cable, the existing cables have to be replaced. So, what is required is to have cable replacement protocols and that is why as we will see shortly that we have an entirely different, an entirely different protocol stack that is basically proposed for use in Bluetooth. Of course, it does match with the OSI layers, TCP IP and OSI layers to a great extent, but then we have a completely different set of layers with different names in the Bluetooth architecture and also we have separate protocols that are that function in each of these different layers. So, we will go through it in a short while. So, Bluetooth one of the very good things about Bluetooth is security. Bluetooth basically ensures high level of security and another very distinctive feature is that Bluetooth helps in forming ad hoc networks. So, concepts such as ad hoc technology, ad hoc piconets are basically commonly used in the case of Bluetooth. Bluetooth technology also like the previous ones like heart etcetera etcetera that we covered in the previous lectures operate in the ISM band 2.4 gigahertz to 2.484 gigahertz. It uses spread spectrum hopping full duplex signal at a nominal rate of 1600 hops per second. It supports one Mbps data rate which is quite attractive short range high data rate communication is supported in Bluetooth. In Bluetooth there are three types of radios that you will typically fi find and they all operate in different ways. We have the class 1 radios, class 2 radios and class 3 radios. Class 3 radios have a range of up to 1 meter or 3 meters. 
Class 2 radios are most commonly found in mobile devices having a range of 10 meters or 30 feet and class 1 radios are used primarily in industrial use cases having a range of 100 meters or 300 feet. In terms of connect, connection establishment using Bluetooth, there are three different phases. The first one is the discovery or the inquiry phase. This next one is the paging phase and the third one is the connection phase. So, so, so basically for connection establishment, there are only three phases. In the inquiry phase, there is some kind of inquiry that runs from one Bluetooth device and that particular Bluetooth device basically what it does is it tries to discover other devices in its vicinity. So, this is so one Bluetooth device it is trying to explore what are the other devices in its vicinity. So, this is basically this discovery phase or the inquiry phase very simple. The next one is the paging phase where some kind of connection is formed between two Bluetooth devices that want to talk to each other. So, some kind of connection is formed and the third one is the connection phase where a device either actively participates in the network or enters a low power sleep mode. There are different modes of operation of Bluetooth devices. One is the active mode and this is the mode where the device basically is fully active, fully functional in all different respects. It actively transmits data, it actively receives data and so on and so forth. So, it, it is fully functional, fully active. The other three phases, the snip mode, the hold mode and the park mode, all these three different modes are basically power saving modes and they differ in very minute ways, in very fine different ways. In the sniff mode, the device basically slips and only listens for transmission at a particular predetermined, predefined interval. In the hold mode, this is also a power saving mode where a device slips for a defined period and then returns back to the active mode. And in the park mode, the slave will become inactive until the master tells it to wake back up. So, we have all these different four modes of operation of Bluetooth devices the active mode, fully functional, fully active fully transmitting, fully receiving and the other three modes the sniff mode, hold mode and park mode are all essentially power saving modes of different types. So, this is the protocol stack that I was talking to you about earlier. So, what we have? We have the physical layer. Then we have the baseband layer, we have the L2 cap and then there are some different other layers and corresponding protocols that are supported in the top layers and then we have the application layer. So, these are the different layers in the Bluetooth. Protocols I was telling you about cable replacement, there are protocols such as RF COM, protocols which will support traditional telephony, protocols that will support service discovery, protocols that will support other link layer functionalities such as LLC. So, these are the different functionalities that can be supported on top of this uh, uh, the, the physical baseband L2 cap layers in Bluetooth. Now, this basically can be mapped to the traditional OSI layers and so these are the OSI layers. So, here again you have the physical layer, you have the link layer you have the different middleware, you have the application layer and the exact 
form of mapping is basically shown in this particular figure in the slide. So, this is how it maps. Okay. So, we have physical radio, radio layer or physical layer, baseband layer L 2 cap and this uh, you know LLC, RF com, telephony, service discovery and the application layer and this is how they ma map to the OSI traditional OSI layers. So, baseband layer or the physical the one that is above the physical here basically. So, physical is basically nothing but the radio and you know we do not need to really understand. Baseband is the physical layer of Bluetooth, it manages physical channels and links and different services such as error correction, data whitening, hop selection, Bluetooth security. We are not going through the details of it, it is not even required for you to know because you know if it is required then really you know this is just you know we are just getting exposure to different protocols in this particular course. So, it is not required to really dig into too much deep of each of these protocols, we just have to be exposed. And things like you know adding Gaussian noise or you know error correction etcetera etcetera these are difficult these are basically you know the different functionalities data whitening you know with the help of white noise you know Gaussian noise etcetera etcetera. And so, these are the things that are basically supported in the baseband layer. Then we have the L 2 cap and in the L 2 cap which basically is on top of the baseband layer functionalities such as multiplexing multiple logical connections between two Bluetooth devices is functioned is made possible in this using this particular layer. So, this particular functionality is implemented in the L 2 cap layer. The L 2 cap provides connection oriented and connection less data services to upper layer protocols, provides protocol multiplexing capability, segmentation. So, because basically you know when you are sending a video for instance, so it cannot be sent all at once right. So, it has to be segmented, fragmented and segment wise it has to be transmitted and then a reassembly also has to be done you know subsequently. So, segmentation and reassembly and group abstractions you know. So, toge together forming of the groups abstracting them uh, and so similar kind of functionalities are all done at this higher up layer which is the L 2 cap layer. Then we have on top different protocols such as RF com the full form is radio frequency communication protocol which is basically a cable replacement protocol and the main purpose of RF com or more specifically uh, 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 in, uh, in so uh, Bluetooth and more specifically RF com is basically to replace the serial cables that are already there that used to be traditionally used. So, you do away with the cables and introduce these protocols uh, uh, that will basically make uh, uh, Bluetooth a cable replacement te technology. So, this RF com it works as an emulation of the RS 232 and if you remember RS 232 or presently it is also known as EIA 232. RS 232 is basically you know it is a serial port communication protocol, serial port communication protocol the traditional serial port communication protocol is RS 232. So, this RS 232 it is emulated its behaviors are emulated in this particular protocol the RF COM protocol. RF COM protocol it provides a simple reliable data stream to the user very similar to TCP and supports up to 60 simultaneous connections between two Bluetooth devices. Then finally, we have the service di discovery protocol and there are some telephony protocols etcetera etcetera because which has to support the traditional telephony functions. So, we are not going through them service discovery protocol is very important because ultimately we are going to use Bluetooth for offering different uh, types of services to different applications. So, some, some, some sort of service discovery has to happen. So, SDP enables the applications to discover available services and their features and SDP addresses the unique characteristics of Bluetooth environment such as dynamic changes in the quality of services in RF proximity of devices in motion 
and can function over a reliable packet transfer protocol. So, SDP it uses a service request response kind of model, a request is sent, a response is received back. Okay. Now, a very important concept I am going to explain to you, which is very much important in order to understand Bluetooth and this is known as the concept of PicoNets. PicoNet is some sort of a unit, you know unit form of network in Bluetooth, unit form of network. What does it mean? So, we have let us say, let us look at this particular example. So, we are going to go through, we have to understand how PicoNets work. So, what we have is something known as the master. So, we have a Bluetooth node, a Bluetooth device which will act as a master and there can be different slave devices. So, we have a master, we have different slaves. So, this entire thing is a piconet, this is a piconet and how many of in a particular unit that means, in a particular piconet in one piconet there can be only one master only one master and one or more slaves. How many? Up to how many? Seven slaves. So, one, two, three up to seven slaves. So, there can be one master and one up to seven slaves in a pico net. Okay. Now, so, this pico net we have one pico net, we have another pico net, we have another pico net. So, this is one pico net, this is another pico net, this is a third pico net. So, what we have are three different pico nets, and together all these pico nets put together is known as scatter net. So, this is the concept of scatter net. In a scatter net, you have several pico nets put together working together, and these pico nets basically talk to each other via the gateway. And these gateway nodes can be anything like you know, so it might so happen that you, ha you have a master over here, they let us say that this is a master, and then you have different slaves, slave, slave, slave. Here, there can be another slave, and this slave of this pico net can act as a master in this particular pico net. So, you know the slave in one pico net can be a master in another pico net and then again it can have one or more slaves and this is the way you know this chain continues and together we have the concept of pico nets and scatter nets. So, going back, so we have Bluetooth enabled devices that connect and communicate wirelessly for short range communication, unit form of it, unit network of it is the pico net. The Bluetooth devices exist in small ad hoc configurations with the ability to act as either the master or the slave. It provisions to have one master and one or up to seven slaves in a particular pico net. The simplest configuration is a point to point configuration with one master and one slave. And where do we get it? This is something that we typically use a single master single slave kind of configuration is something that we use typically to exchange files, to exchange videos, to exchange images, graphics and so on between our, between our mobile devices. So, when we are using our smartphones, we turn, turn on the smartphones to uh, turn on the Bluetooth in our smartphones to uh, you know two devices, and then from one such device 
a image can be sent a file can be sent to another such device after the discovery or the initiation phase it can be sent using this particular configuration. So, we have one master one slave kind of configuration. So, when more than two Bluetooth devices communicate with one another it is called a piconet. A piconet can contain up to seven slaves clustered around a single master. The device that initializes establishment of the piconet becomes the master and the master is responsible for transmission control by dividing the network into a series of time slots using TDMA. So, basically what happens is within a piconet we have a master and we have you know up to 7 slaves. So, what the master does is it will have to divide the time that is allotted into different slots and will have to distribute those slots among the slave nodes in that piconet and the master will have to ensure that periodically this thing is done and is distributed to the different slaves in its piconet. So, this is the job of the master in a piconet. So, this is the diagram showing the configuration of piconet and scatternet. So, we have within a piconet, so we here what we see we have a scatternet consisting of two piconets, this is one piconet, this is another piconet and we see that there is a master and there are three slaves rather four slaves and this slave is acting as a bridge between these two piconets and these are again three different slaves for this particular piconet. And here as you can see over here we have distinct masters in each of these piconets. It is not like the same master. In fact, what we could have had is this bridge which is a slave for this piconet would have also been configured in such a way that it would act as a master for this piconet. This is also possible. So, the master of the slave they use the 42 bit addressing. Okay. So, this is the addressing scheme that is used. Each piconet device will support 7 simultaneous connections to other devices. Each device can communicate with several piconets simultaneously and piconets can establish dynamically and automatically as Bluetooth enabled devices enter and leave piconets. So, they can basically configure self configure, they can change you know devices can the Bluetooth devices can get into a piconet, can go, to go out of the piconet dynamically and the topology changes accordingly. So, all these things are featured in a piconet. There is no direct connection between the slaves, all connections are either through the master to slave or slave to master mode. Slaves are allowed to transmit once these have been polled by the master. Transmission starts in the slave to master time slot immediately following a polling packet from the master and the device can be member of two or more piconets and this is something that I explained earlier as well. In one piconet that, that particular device can be a slave, in another piconet it can even act as a master. And together you put all these piconets and what you get is a physically extended infrastructure comprising of several piconets known as the scatternet. Applications of Bluetooth are quite common audio players, home automation systems, smartphones, toys, hands free headphones, sensor networks they all are users of Bluetooth. So, the Bluetooth is a very important technology that we have just covered and it is quite heavily used for building IoT systems. Zigbee, Heart, Bluetooth, NFC, RFID these are all like different technologies that can be used for establishing connectivity between different nodes for building up. IoT. They all have their different distinct features and we have already seen that in a previous lecture we have seen that how heart, wireless heart and Zigbee differ from each other. And now it is also quite evident how Bluetooth differs from Zigbee. So, for, for Bluetooth we can have 
high data rate communication compared to low data rate in the case of Zigbee, but Zigbee is consumes much lower power compared to Bluetooth. So, there are pros and cons depending on the application. In, in fact, what can also happen is we could be using all of these technologies together in parallel and we can have Bluetooth working with Zigbee, Zigbee working with Heart, etcetera, etcetera. So, all, all these things are possible. Zigbee primarily consumer IoT, Heart wireless Heart primarily industrial IoT, but it does not even matter you, you can even put all of them together for maybe industrial IoT or on the other hand consumer IoT. So, this can also be done. So, these are the all these powerful technologies that can be used for building IoT systems. Thank you.